Yo, what is going on guys, JD Yumiko here, and today we're back with some more The House in Fata Morgana. Now, last time we left off, we had seemingly gotten through everything. We, um, the maid had retold her story, we figured out who she actually was, how she came to be what she came to be, how we came to be what we came to be. But, right as we were about to leave the house, once and for all, even if it meant us disappearing and dying for good because we've been around so long we decided that that's what we were going to do but the witch was not going to have that so she um she won't she took Giselle um so we've we've basically both been trapped in the darkness the void um there's really no other way to really describe what it is that's that's exactly what it is so, we're having a little bit of a flashback right now, we have some choices to make, and we have a witch to fight. So without further ado, let's jump right on back into it. <clears throat> okay, so right now I believe we're practicing our conversational skills with Giselle. This is a little bit of a flashback. So let me turn down my own volume, because this game is very loud. Okay. You haven't told me your age. Tell me about your family. Tell me your preferences. Do you like being here? Well, right off the bat, we can already say we don't, we don't know her age. Although I don't really think it matters. We know about her family. Her preferences. Let's ask that. We might be able to go through all of them. This, that might be how this works. Wow, how very forward of you. Huh? My taste in men is the last thing I expected you to ask about, Master. I don't recall specifying people. <laughs> now, 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 don't fret the details. It's only natural to be curious, so let's make it about that. And that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. Alright then. Tell me about your first crush, Master. And I have to start? I never had one. What? No, I'm not buying it. You were living at home until 10 years ago, weren't you? Surely there was someone who caught your eye. There was not. <clears throat> Without missing a beat. Oh, fine. Then I'll go. My first crush was the son of a blacksmith. You missed the part where you asked what kind of guy was he. This is such a pain. Since you asked, he was a huge, muscular fellow. He was so tall, he would always hit his head on the doorway whenever he came to our shop to trade. Oh. The nice, beefy guys really are great, huh? They make your heart get all fluttery and tight. Are you trying to imply I don't have a chance? Though, I think that was more admiration than love. You know, the way a group of girls would get together and fawn over a popular, good-looking guy? It was like that. So you're saying the buff bastard was popular? Very much so. I wonder what love feels like. I never got the chance to find out before ending up like this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to get all dark on you. Say whatever's on your mind. I don't deserve your consideration. It was my family that pushed you through that, after all. Perhaps it is my, retis my reticence, is that how that's how pronounced? That causes her to watch her step around me. Damn, I need to come up with something to say. I'm trying to make my voice go deeper. Ugh, when I was 14. Oh? You asked about my first crush. Ah, I knew you had one. So tell me, what was she like? She was the daughter of a noble family. Her name was Amy, and she was a year older than me. Ah, love between nobility. A world I can only even imagine. It never went anywhere. What? You didn't even try to woo her? You didn't shower her in presents? Were you by chance late bloomer, master? She was my brother's fiance. Oh, oh, I see. So it was a love that could never be realized. That's sad. Not really. 
Besides, I don't feel anything for her anymore. And what I felt then was just impulses. I guess that makes us both inexperienced. I suppose it does. <laughs> uh, um, okay, I think that's enough of that. S so it is. Alright, so it is one of those deals where we just kind of tick down the options. Uh, you haven't told me your age. My age? <laughs> Take a guess. I thought she would tell me anything. Um. 18, 20, 25, you must be 30. <laughs> oh, good. yeah, no. You, you must be 30. That'll go over well. Honestly, sh I would probably say 20. I feel like 25 is... I feel like 25 is too old. She just seems like... She's like youthful, but not like... 18 youthful, if that makes sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 20. I feel like that's probably the safest bet. Wow, you're exactly right! You're surprisingly a student master. And what surprised you about that? I didn't expect you to get it on your first try. Hey man, what can I say? I just got those deductive reasoning skills, so it's no biggie. I didn't expect you to get it on your first try. Have you been secretly watching me? No oh, master, you. You're making me blush. Why the silent death stare? I'm struck with an overwhelming urge to hurl you out a window. Oh, you're no fun. Okay, it's your turn now. How old are you, master? That's actually an even better question. As I recall, I should be 27 this year. Oh wow, you're much older than I expected. What did you expect? You are very mellow, like I would expect of an older man. But when, every once in a while, you give the impression of a teenage boy. Uh, uh, um, for what it's worth, I meant that in a good way. For what it's worth. <laughs> Alright, tell me about your family. You want to know about my family? We were pretty normal, I think. Not much interesting about us. We'd been getting able to get a citizenship in the capital, but we weren't super rich or anything. In fact, it was because we were having money trouble that I ended up here. It's not easy for three women to make it on their own. You didn't have a father or any brothers. Excuse me. No, we lost my father to a plague when I was young. And since then, it's been me, my mother, and my older sister. But they're both bright, lively people. My family motto is a smile can make anything better. Maybe that explains why, can she, why she can still smile now, even after nearly succumbing to despair. I've always kind of wanted some brothers, though. Men are more suited to physical labor, yes. Mm, not quite what I was going for. I feel like, I don't know, the kinds of things you'd ask a brother and a sister for help with are different. I'm not sure how to explain it, but a guy with broad shoulders and muscular arms is someone you couldn't look up to, for instance. Someone who looks like they'd always keep you safe. She's never been betrayed by family, it would seem. She can't even imagine family hurting her. She has no idea that those closest to you, those who are supposed to care about you more than anything, can be your greatest enemies. Well, if that isn't foreshadowing as hell, concerning Michael's own brother is the one that kills him. That blood is a bond heavier than any chain. Um, Master, I believe your brothers are still on your side. <laughs> yeah, well, fucking, apparently not. It's been so long, I don't know if they are. I don't know what they think about me anymore. I'm sure they're still your allies. You... You want to believe it too, don't you? You want to believe they're not enemies. 
let's believe in them together then. Anything you want to believe, you should. It's such a better way to look at the world than the other way around. Yeah, more like a deluded way to look at the world. You have to be positive, or one day you'll crack. Always remember to have faith so that doesn't happen. I don't understand. She's honest about her emotions in a way I simply cannot be. She's the exact opposite of me in that regard. And yet she can still read me. I don't get it. How can she understand me like that? It's like she can read my mind. If only... If only I could just tell her everything. Make it all another page in our mindless chatter. Get everything weighing down on, my, on me off my chest. Is something the matter? You're cruel. What? I said you're cruel. I'm sorry. Ignore me. In preparation of the day you can finally go back home, you're going to have to stop being such a picky eater. Where did that come from? Think about how terrible it would be if, when the day finally came, you went back sickly and weak and emaciated. You wouldn't be able to enjoy yourself. You're still alright, Master. You're... doing okay. So let's try to keep you healthy. Alright, do you like being here? Of course, I love it here. Being with you, being able to talk to you like this. See, that I don't understand. What? Why not? I find it difficult to believe there exists any reason speaking with me would be anything but unpleasant. Mm, you're so negative. Oh hush. Oh hush. Say that, for example, instead of me, there was someone not so pessimistic here. Would you rather be talking to th you would rather be talking to them, wouldn't you? I really do enjoy this, truly. I will admit, my time down in that village was, for the most part, delightful. But, oh, how should I put this? I started realizing, yeah, I'm kind of forcing myself to fit that image. And I'm trying to convince myself that that's okay. But somehow, when I'm here, there is none of that. I wonder why that is. I... I certainly wouldn't know. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't. Ah, I know! Maybe I think of you as a kid now. Come again? I love talking to kids. What? Hey now, don't give me that look. What I'm trying to say is, you're very sincere, Master. You're not going to smile and then stab me in the back when I turn the other way. I can relax around you, which is nice. I... see. Ah, you just blushed, didn't you? You're blushing, you adorable little thing. It's alright, you're allowed to fall for me. <laughs> is there any window in particular you'd like to be thrown out of? No fun at all. See what I was saying, Master? With just a short conversation, I know you better than I did before, and you me. That's fine and well, but what do I do with that knowledge? Huh? You don't do anything with it. It's fun learning things you didn't know before. That's all there is to it. And what happens when there's nothing left to learn? And that's a day I don't think will ever come. People are always changing, growing. So there's no upper limit to what you can know about them. And there's always something new to discover. Maybe we'll be here for many more years. Or maybe you'll go home sooner than you expect. But either way, I hope we can get to know each other well until then. And of course, if you're open to it, it doesn't have to end there. We can continue getting to know each other for years to come. Ah, uh, hey now, what are you looking away for? What do you think? It's because you keep throwing me off balance. 
few months ago I was doing everything in my power to avoid her. Yet now, now that smile of hers seems so oddly enchanting. I don't understand. I will do my best so that we can make this work. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Giselle, I was too awkward back then to even compliment you on your smile, to put my feelings into words. I was too cynical to accept what you said at face value, which I know cause which I know caused you plenty of grief. I'm not much better now than I was then, but I will tell you this. When I next see you, I want more than anything to let you know how much I adore your smile and how much I don't want to see you, don't want to lose you, or it, ever again. You must never reclaim your old selves. Become my loyal servants, always at my side. And curse them with me, my dears. Eternal suffering on all their souls. Oh, this is different. Okay, who are we though? That's the question. My consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, is slowly drawn back to the surface. With each new breath, feeling grad with each new breath, feeling gradually returns to my fingers. I can hear the pattering of rain some from somewhere. And the sound of a crackling fire. Creak, creak, creak. Splurt, splurt, splurt. It takes a moment for me to realize I'm in the very same spot where I first awoke. I don't know how I got here, but I'm sitting in a rocking chair hunched forward. My head feels like someone filled it with rocks, and I'm having difficulty focusing. My joints are creaking, and I feel like I'm about to vomit. A suffocating odor hangs over the room. What is this? Giselle. Giselle! Everything comes back to me at all, all at once. That's right. I watched Morgana kidnap her. I watched the witch drag her into the darkness, unable to reach her hand. Where are you, Morgana? I know you're there, cackling as you look down on me. Say something, witch! I will find you. And I will take her back. What on earth? There's a pool of liquid at my feet, rising just short of my, of my ankles. It's sticky and uncomfortably warm. Every step I take makes splat, splat noises. This is... Blood. The mansion has taken on a very different face from when Giselle was leading me through its halls. Blood of unknown origin not only covers the floor, but also the streams, but also streams down the walls and drips from the ceiling. I'm speechless as I behold the dreadful scene. Every th every breath I take smells, of tastes, and smells of rust. It's also unreal, beyond my comprehension. All I can do is stare at gas, feeling like I might pass out. Gisela. I have seen this, this same twisted nightmare as me. An image of her floating alone in a vast sea of blood flashes through my mind. That vision kicks me into motion. I promise, I will come for you. So please, just hang in there for a little longer. I begin walking, or more accurately, dragging my heavy feet forward. The constant splashing of blood against my ankles grates at my already taut nerves. Morgana told me to find my way to her, and I can think of only one place she would be. She and Giselle must be there. The tower, I'm guessing? The stained glass window is splattered with blood, too. It creates trails like streams of tears running down the Archangel's face. I give the window a brief glance before making my way to the door leading to the observation tower. Yep, I was right. However... Why won't it open? There should be a lock. 
So why? Lustrous black chains seal the metal door. I can recall no such obstruction present during either my life or my time hereafter. What on earth is going on in this house? No, that's not important right now. What matters is making it through this door. Damn it! I pull and I push, but the chains won't give an inch. They feel sturdy enough that I probably couldn't cut through them either. There has to be some way. I consider giving up here and scouring the rest of the house, but I'm convinced the tower is my best chance. The fact that it's sealed now when it hadn't been before feels like a challenge more than a deterrent. I trace a length of chain with my hand, and at the end of it I find a peculiar looking lock into which the ends of several chains have been fed. There are... three keyholes? Morgana fashioned a custom lock just for this. I need to find the three keys to open the door then. But I have no idea where to begin my search. I lived here for more than ten years, and yet it feels like I've stepped into a strange land. No, it's not the same house. Searching blindly is only going to waste time, and the longer I take, the more danger she's in. I met someone before who had a key. The painting. It was before I had reclaimed myself, when I was exploring the mansion alone. Think, Michael. Who was it? The painting. Yep. Called it. Like everything else in the house, the painting is covered in blood. That it, depict, that it depicts a serene rural landscape only makes the contrast that much grimmer. There, I remember talking to this painting, assuming I wasn't hallucinating. I have a question for you. Are you awake? Please wake up. Ah. Can you hear my voice? Please say something. Ah. You reside here in the house like the witch, don't you? You've been here with her all this time, haven't you? Then you must know how to give in get into the observation tower. About the three keys that I need to open the lock. I need to get into the tower. Please tell me where I can find the keys. Say something, damn it! Answer my question! Uh, 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 oh, is someone there? What's the matter? Uh, 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 I feel kind of strange. Did the witch do something in the ring to me? Please get a hold of yourself. Everything's all, all red, 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 red. I can't stand it. I don't really remember using that c c color. Ugh. I reach my hand up to try to wipe as much of the blood off the canvas as possible, but I can't even smear it with my sleeve, let alone get it off. You're wasting time. B but it's the thought that cow counts. Any, 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 you had a question for me. G -g 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 go on, I'm listening. I guess the painting isn't on the witch's side then. The door to the observation tower has been locked. I need to gather three keys, I think. That's my assumption since the lock has three keyholes. Do you know of any such keys? And if so, could you tell me where they might be? Keys? Keys? Keys, 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 keys. Please stay with me. You're the only one I can ask for help. Keys, 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 keys. I'm g guessing that th th this, this is probably in some way, come probably in some way connected to, 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 to her pa 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 past. Her past? 
you you know the events the which is always always cursing about what happened between her and those th 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 three men what happened between them the the, the keys are, are probably with the, the three of them the three shadows you must have seen them three men shadows find them 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 uh, 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 and you'll probably find the keys the keys too but 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 but, but watch yourself they, they aren't li likely to trust y you easily. The, the, the depth of their s s s s sins grows greater the, the farther you g g go. The visit them in order. In order, in order, in order. The 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 f f f f first one p p probably won't be a p p p problem. S -s so to tell me something, you 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 are M M Michael, aren't you? What? Uh, I I wanted to uh, apologize to you for so long. Wait, w what do you mean? Do you know me? Did you? What do you want me to apologize for? Tell me, please! Could you be... But why? How? When everything else is finished, I'm going to need to visit this painting again. But now I have other things to do. A painting? Um, well, a man's trapped in a painting. That has some reason to apologize to Michael. Um. I mean, right off the bat, you could think, okay, the brother, right? Um. I can't really. I mean, as far as I know, there's not anybody else. Um, that would. That would either be willing to give or really need to give an apology. You could say his father, but. I mean, considering how much of a terrible fucking person his father was, I really don't think he'd all of a sudden have a change of heart after all these years. He seems like he'd be more of a vengeful spirit, if anything. The painting gave me a hint about where I could find the keys. I don't know anything about this past Morgana has with the three men. I never asked her about herself, after all. So maybe I'm going to have to end up doing more than simply take Giselle back. As my... As our involvement with the witch caused us to be swept up into her twisted maelstrom of fate. Regardless, I need to get to work. <laughs> the painting said to visit them in order. I assume he was referring to the order I entered the three doors. Alright, the den, the cellar, or the rose garden. Okay, well, we would go to the rose garden. Because that was the first door that we went into. I make my way to the Rose Garden. The corridor leading there is a mess, and the wooden door is rotting away. I can smell the flowers on the other side. Everything is different from when I was alive, from when Giselle planted and raised that single rose. The scene from the past spreads out before me. The field of once proudly flourishing roses is now withered and gray. Knowing how beautiful it had once been only makes it that much more dispiriting. A bitter breeze rushes past me. Solitude hangs over the garden like a thick fog, eating away at me. This isn't what I wanted. Someone, get me out of here. Oh God. Tell me that I'm not the bad one here. A young man's shadow stands off to the side, muttering listlessly to himself. I recognize his voice. 
do you have the keys? The boy and I had never met, but I feel like I know him quite well, like we've been acquainted for many years. I know how polite and mild-mannered he is. I know how kind, and how vulnerable, how human his heart is. However, very little of that boy seems to remain. This isn't what I wanted. Oh God. Please answer me. Someone, get me out of here. Tell me that I'm not the bad one here. Answer me, Mel Rhodes! I know that's you! I knew it was Mel. The second he said, boy... Huh? As soon as I say the Shadow's name, it turns to face me. I still can't make out much detail, but he seems slightly less tenuous now. Who are you? How do you know my name? My name... My name is Michael. I once lived here in this mansion. Michael. I... I know that name. I know it very well. But something's not right. You look different from the Michael I remember. I'm not the Michael you know. Our names simply sound the same. Oh. If I remember correctly... Michelle. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Oh yeah, no, because... Michelle, well, I pronounce it Michelle. It could be, I, I mean, considering they're saying, they keep saying it sounds the same. I'm assuming that it's pronounced Michael, but I guess a female version of Michael in a very, very literal sense. Um, but that was the actual name of the white-haired girl was Michael, so. That makes sense. She would never come see me. I have a question for you. Do you have the key to the observation tower? I do. Would you please give it to me? I need to get into the tower. And what do you need there? There's someone there I need to find. That's all. It may not sound like much to you, but it means a great deal to me. You're not one of her prisoners then? No. I came here of my own free will. To find this person? Exactly. Then maybe you can help me. And help you how? Set me free. Convince her to release me from this place. I'm begging you. The anguish emanating from the boy's shadow is so thick it causes me to recoil. There's a thread of dark desperation in his voice. Has he been imprisoned here for hundreds of, year hundreds of years like Giselle? Promise me, you'll get me out of here. I... Am I even equipped to judge whether that would be a good decision or not? All I know of him is his time in the mansion during the Era of Roses. I know nothing else of his life. I don't even know if I would be capable of keeping such a promise. Do I have the strength to save anyone other than her? Do you absolutely need the key? You won't agree to help me without it, will you? What? I... Um... I dropped it. Over there. Huh? The boy is thick pointing to a thick bramble of roses. Despite the flowers themselves being wilted, the thorns are sharp. It was an accident, I swear. But I didn't want to scratch up my arm, so I left it there. It's not my fault there are so many thorns. I really want to hit this boy. Why couldn't you have just said so? Because I thought if I didn't have the key, that you wouldn't help me. There's only so much I can do, regardless of whether you have the key. I cannot promise you anything, nor can I be the judge of you. I see. I do not have enough information to make such a decision. Cheap promises and superficial kindness will only serve to destroy the both of us. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to retrieve the key. What? You'll never get it out of those thorns? I don't care if it's at the bottom of the ocean. I will have that key. You're wasting your time. I approach the bramble, reaching out for it with my right hand. From beneath, behind me I can sense the boy watching. 
First, I attempt to spread the tangled thorn-ridden stems so I can pull, so I can put my arm in without injuring myself. But they seem to be made out of iron rather than plant, and my efforts prove fruitless. The only opening is barely large enough to fit an arm in, and resembles the toothy mouth of a beast. Looking around the garden, I can't find anything that looks remotely useful. I guess my only option is reaching in. That's not going to stop me. I lean down, inserting my right arm into the thorny cavern. Immediately, they begin ripping at my sleeve and gashing at my flesh. Ugh! Blood spills down my arm. I'm long since dead, no longer human, but the pain is still agonizing, still very much real. Giselle, she doesn't bleed. She doesn't feel pain. Am I not the same as her, then? It doesn't matter right now. Focus on getting the damn key. Streams of crimson spread through the steel-like tangle gnawing at my arm like a ravenous animal. Where the hell is the key? The thorny stems are twisted and layered so thick I can't see inside at all. As I dig around blindly, I start losing feeling in my arm. It's an endless deluge of pain. Uh, hey, cut it out! You're going to lose your arm! I will not stop until I have the key! Don't ask me for help. I wasn't even considering it. I collect what remains of my gradually fading sensation and focus it into my fingers, praying even one of them will brush against the key. Damn it! But as much as I search, as much as I dig, I find nothing so much as resembling key, which means it must be deeper than I can reach my arm. Even so, I cannot give up. Hey, uh... Please, be quiet right now. I need to focus. I'm sorry, I do have the key, actually. <laughs> this little fucker! You what?! I I'm so sorry. I di it didn't look like you were willing to help me, even if, even if I gave it to you, so... Plus, she told me not to give it to anyone for any reason. Hold still so I can beat you! I, I didn't mean you any ill will! You most certainly did! I'll give you the key, so please have mercy. Trembling in fear, the boy's shadow sticks out a hand, holding the key. The arm I used to dig through the thorns is so bloody and gashed I can barely look at it, but it does still function. And so I take the key from him with my right hand. <laughs> this, this little shit! We goddamn near fucking ripped our arm off for like digging through these bushes. Why couldn't you use your other hand? That's gross. That's the idea. You're kind of a jerk, you know. That's a laugh coming from you. Do you have any idea how much that hurt? I, I know. I'm sorry, really. But hey, you were alive, so no big deal, right? But wait, can you actually say that either of us are alive? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> oh, who was that? Was that me? Oh no, that was Mel. Shit, my bad. I do appreciate you giving me the key, though. Seeing as it seemed to be rather important to you, too. Hey, is this person you're going to get back really worth going through all this for? She is. She is the only person who ever loved me. And she's waiting for me. I... see. You know, I had someone that meant a lot to me, too. My sister. Which one? Which? The one with flaxen hair, like me. If you happen to see her, do something nice for her, please. That, I would say, is your responsibility. Yeah, you're right. But I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. In the tale I witnessed, the boy pushed his sister away, for an understandable reason, admittedly. But now he seems to bear no grudge for her. Did something else happen between them? 
Even if it did, I don't have time to ask about it. I'll be on my way. All right. Take care. There are two more keys. Watch out, though. They're not the most friendly people, and they'll probably be even more enraged locked up like this. I appreciate the warning. If only someone like you had shown up sooner and taken the keys from us. Goodbye. After bidding me farewell, the boy's phantom dissipates into the shadows of the Groves Garden. I wonder if he's gone back to mindlessly muttering his regrets. I should get going. <laughs> Alright, uh, den or cellar? I'm pretty sure it was the cellar. Uh, yeah, no. no. Yeah, no, because it goes... We did the Rose Garden with the flaxen-haired boy. The cellar with the beast. And the den with Jacopo. That's how it went. Because this is where the white-haired girl was killed in the beast's original telling of the story. I descend the stairs, opening the cellar door. The first time I visited this room, the smell of blood from within was nearly suffocating. Now the entire house reeks of it, and I've started to go numb to the odor. There's no one here. Am I in the wrong place? I been, begin exploring the cellar, hoping to find, hoping to maybe find the key hidden away or abandoned somewhere. As I reach my hand out to investigate one area, a shadow leaps out of the thick darkness. It's so swift I have no time to react. My body freezes in place. A shadow stands before me, holding the tip of a blade mere inches from my face. A key. You have. A key. I do, yes. Cold sweat trickles down my back. My voice is shaking and there's no hiding it. The shade appears to be glaring at me, though I cannot make out its face. After a few seconds, it withdraws its blade. Let me see it. The boy's key. Did he give it to you? In the Rose Garden, yes. Are you too? Acquaintances. How could that be, though? You are from a completely different era and country. Who... Who are you? I'm... No, never mind. Who, are, who you are is irrelevant to me. Are you... Are you human now? If you are speaking of my nature, then no is the only answer I can give you. You didn't kill me, though. If you wanted to, you could easily skewer me where I stand. If that's what you want, I'll be happy to oblige. What did you come here for? For your key. I came to ask if you would give it to me. You mean to open that door? I need to get into the tower, yes. I see. Take it. Oh? Well, that was fucking easy, what the hell? The man's shadow tosses the key at my feet. I'm not quite sure what to think. I didn't expect him to give it up so readily. What? Take it. I won't stab you in the back while you're bending over. I thought you were supposed to hold on to this at all costs. I no longer have any reason to guard that key. In the past, I might have severed your head from your shoulders the moment you mentioned it there. What point in the past? That's a question I wish I knew the answer to. Hey, do you know why I'm here? Where this place is? When it is? Why I can't get out of here? What's happened to me? I... Tell me! I have no idea what's going on! Not a single goddamned idea! Neither do I. Get out. Take the key and get out of here! GET OUT! I can't bring myself to say anything to the arranged shadow, so I follow his command, picking up the key, and departing from the cellar. 
Yeah, that was very fucking easy. The, the little brat gave us more trouble than the fucking cannibalistic murderous beast. <laughs> How does that make sense? <sighs> Although I guess when you look at it, um, the flaxen-haired boy was always pretty mild-mannered, and obviously he seems to more so be desperate to make up with his sister. While the beasts, really, his whole reason for living was the white-haired girl. So, what now that she's gone, and now that he knows she's gone, he probably doesn't really give a shit anymore. Excuse me. I thought I was dead for a second. Uh, that makes two, though. <clears throat> what could have happened between these people? The painting mentioned a past with them, and Morgana spoke of the wicked men she cursed. Does that mean they did something awful enough to earn Morgana's spite? Right now, though, I must push onward. If I'm not mistaken, the final key should be in that room. The room with the... Uh, the billiards table. What is billiards anyway? <laughs> I think I was in a completely different fucking time. I... I should get moving. It is a kind of... It, that's definitely a big question, because these are people that are spread out between completely different eras. Like, hundreds of years apart. So, that's definitely the question of all time here, is what exactly is their connection with each other? Is this a deal where... I mean, I, I can only assume that at one point in time, they were all alive at the same time, and all knew each other, and did something to, like like he said, gain Mor Morgana's spite. Um, presumably something awful enough to do that. Or maybe Morgana's just petty, who knows. Um, so it could be possible that maybe she reincarnated them. Um, or I guess, in her terms, reconstructed them uh, over the years, all for the shot at getting revenge on them and trapping their souls. Once I have this key, I can get into the observation tower. I'm almost certain Morgana is waiting for me there, with Giselle. So I gather up my resolve and hurry to the last room, not wanting to take even a second longer than necessary getting her back. I can hardly believe my eyes when I step into the den. In the middle of the room is a large rectangular table. Several balls roll across its surface and perched on and perched on one corner. Looking down at the floor is her. Giselle. Giselle! The question of why she's here never crosses my mind. All I feel is elation to see her once more. There's no room for anything else in my head. I run over to her put her hand on my shoulder. Thank goodness you're all right! And turn her towards me. What? Huh? Huh? G Giselle? Giselle! I shake her, causing her head to droop lifelessly. There's not a trace of light in her unmoving eyes. Huh? Huh? Why, Giselle, why? Huh? Huh? Say something! Say something, Giselle! Say anything, please! This, this, this can't be! You, you, you can't be! You can't be! My mind goes blank. I can't catch my breath. The world is hazy. Why? Why is Giselle... Why did... I have to find her... Like this? Why? I swore I would do anything. I swore I would never lose you again. No, no, no. This can't be. A thought crosses my day's despair on mind. It's probably nothing more than vain hope, but... Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast. That's right. She doesn't bleed. So this... This can't be her. This isn't her! Or maybe, 
Maybe Morgana has the power to alter Giselle's very nature. Kill her with the flick of a wrist. No, I don't even want to think about it. There's no hope to be found down that path. All I can do is pray. Beg for her to still be alive. Or, if alive isn't the right word, herself. My prayers bring me back to reality, which is when I realize. There's something hard pressing against the back of my head. I hear a harsh metallic clink. That's gonna be a fucking gun, isn't it? Jacopo's gun. What? <clears throat> a piercing bang rips through the air as I drop to the floor. My ears are ringing painfully. Through the cloud of smoke and confusion, I see a man's silhouette. <laughs> Missed. It takes several moments for me to recognize the object in his hand as a gun. Not only because it's draped in shadow, but because I've never seen one with my own eyes. Had I not witnessed what they were capable of through the stories, I would not have understood how terrifying they were. Not a problem, though. I'll finish you off with the next one. Now you hold still, boy. Start running around like a rat and I can't guarantee you a painless death. Wait, hold on a second! What are you trying to kill me for? Because you make too much goddamn noise, that's why. Don't tell me. You're the one who... What? I turn my gaze to the large table. Giselle isn't there. It must have been an illusion after all. The realization sends a wave of relief through me. I still have a gun in my face, though. Curious man you are. Does the table warrant your attention more than me? I have a request. Could you give me the key in your possession? That's all I need and then I'll leave and stop making a racket. I'm not sure you understand your predicament, boy. Because if you think you're in any position to be asking favors, you're dumber than you look. <laughs> First off, I don't even know what key you're talking about. I don't believe that. The other two had keys. You telling me they gave you their keys? It sounds like they really do know each other. See for yourself. I believe you should recognize these. Are you collecting them to enter the tower? Are you going to see Morgana? This seems to be a hint of tension in the man's voice. Though I can't see his face, I can sense the waves forming within him. I brace myself for either rejection or hot lead. But the apparition gives me neither. Take me with you! What? You have the other two keys, don't you? Then you can open the door! Take me to the witch! Wait, slow down! What are you planning to do when you see her? What do you think? She has to... She... Has... To... He's gone. She has to... What? What was he trying to say? On the floor where the shade stood is a new key. Curious though I am about his last words, this makes three. I have all the keys now. <laughs> Are you trying to rile me up, Morgana? Are you enjoying yourself up there, showing me these phantoms and watching me squirm? Just you wait. I'm on my way. I give the room a brief once-over before making my way back to the chapel. The keys fit perfectly in the openings on the locks, and when I insert the last one, it clicks open. The chains sealing the door fall the chains sealing the door fall to the ground. They're waiting beyond this door, at the top of the stairs. I start pondering what I can even do in the face in a face off against Morgana, which sends a sh nervous shudder down my spine. I'm not going to back down, regardless, but she is a witch. And I'm a mere human. Formerly human. I'm not a master swordsman, nor do I wield a gun. I have nothing at all with which to fight her. I still have to confront the witch, though, no matter what. As laughably reckless, as foolish as I may be, I have no other option. 
I placed my hand on the door, preparing to climb the tower where I once spent my last breath. Giselle locked safely away in the chamber at the top. The tower where I first met the witch. No hesitation. Yes, yes, yes. The sound of blood streaming down the stairs echoes off the stone walls. Although I have begun to grow numb to the house's otherworldly ornamentation, the sight of a seemingly endless river of blood flowing down the spiral staircase sends a chill through me. Every step I climb makes a splat, splat noise. When I reach the window, I look out to see a churning reddish-black fog. Now this brings me back. You climbing these stairs alone, just like old times. Morgana. I waited so, so long for someone like you to show up. Someone with enough to spare to resurrect me. Give her back. But now I don't see it in you. I don't feel one bit of that intense hopelessness anymore. Give her back. And here I thought that we were cut from the same cloth. Morgana! Yes, yes, I'll give her back. If you can make it to me without losing yourself. I will not give up. It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> Looking up, I can't see how far the stairs extend. It's just a gaping blackness, so I have no way of knowing for sure whether I'm getting any closer. Around and around, around and around, around and around. Beneath me, the Blood River traces the same path in reverse. I start to wonder if the staircase even does end. If I'm not just eternally retracing my own steps. But I continue climbing regardless. It's all I can do. Put one foot in front of the other and I and hope I make it to the top. Morgana, what is this place? What did you do to it? What is it? Why, it's the mansion you lived in for a decade, of course. You look at this and tell me it's the same house. What's with the blood everywhere? And the three shadows? Now, now, my dear, no need to raise your voice. Then you're being impolite. One question at a time. Answer me! What is this place? It's immaterial. Even if I were to give you an answer you found satisfying, what would that knowledge do for you? Your objective is to reach the top of these stairs and rescue Giselle. Nothing more, nothing less. Isn't that right? Or, by chance, have you taken an interest in me? Despite never once asking about myself before. My gut tells me that without knowing what this place is, even without even the briefest glimpse at its nature, I won't be able to safely get her back. Without knowing what I'm up against, I don't stand a chance. Please tell me about this mansion, Morgana. About yourself. What are you, Morgana? A witch. No, that's not what I'm asking. What do you have the powers you do? What are you? Yes, yes, I get it. Humans feel the need to attach names to things and phenomena they don't understand. I understand that feeling quite well. Which is why I'm sure you'll be rather disappointed when I reveal the truth. What do you mean? What I mean is, I'm an ordinary human. That's not possible. You expect me to believe a human created this illusion? Then are you saying that I'm a magician or a wizard like you might see in a fairy tale? I would believe that over you being a human. Think back then, would you? Recall our time together. Did I ever once use magic? Did I control fire or wind? Did I create illusions? No, I did none of that, because I could not. To you, when you were alive, I suppose you could say I was not but a simple ghost. A rather mischievous, but otherwise powerless spirit. And I was nothing more to those three men either. The witch, Morgana, was never anything but a wretched phantom haunting this old house. But then, how do you explain this? Michael, my dear, we're not the same beings we once were. We're different than we were in the realm of light, the era of the living. You figured that much out, though, haven't you? That you're already dead. Yes, I know. I know I couldn't possibly be alive. Yet still you view this world through the lands of the living. You make no effort to see it as the land of the dead. Tell me, 
why would you think that the realm of the living and the dead are the same? Though the worlds behind each door were so vibrant, the mansion itself never had any color. They were the memories of the past, of the land of the living, of times forever lost to us. Our lives have already come to an end, my dear. Every last soul within these walls is dead. This is the world that lies beyond the end. It is my world. This is the afterlife. Do I get caught up in the min in the minute? In the minute? I don't know. None of us have a future. So what reason is there for you to so desperately obsess over taking Giselle back? Just like you. She's long since dead. <sighs> She's a walking corpse. It's nothing I didn't already know. But hearing her say it, it's like, a kick, it's like a kick to the gut. Dead or alive, she still lives on within this house, and my spirit found its way back too. Why then should I not wish for her to have a future? No matter what form it may take. No matter if my choices erase her from this world entirely. Having seen what lies beyond the door in her heart, what happened in all those hundreds of years, I can never let her remain here with you. Trapped in this world bereft of light, Drifting aimlessly for all eternity. <laughs> so determined you feel the need to raise your voice. But you're not going to budge on that point, I see. I ask you this again, Morgana. Please tell me about yourself. How did you become a witch? How did you end up attached to this house? I want to hear your story. You honestly want to know about me? I do now. Yes. But not for me. For her, right? Don't be shy now. It's the truth, isn't it? Besides, if you did say it was for me, not her, I might die of laughter. As you wish. You have seen many tales- oh. As you wish. You have seen many tales of people's lives since arriving here. And now, you shall see mine. Though I ask you this. Will you writhe in, the dis writhe in despair with me? Will you endure the maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? Will you face despair again and again and again? As I said before, if that is what you want from me. Let me tell you something though, my dear. It will not be as easy to watch as you imagine. Now that you've reclaimed your old self, you'll be able to feel all my pain as if it were your own. To resonate with it. Resonate? With it. You no longer have your little guardian with you either. My guardian. She was always protecting me. <laughs> You'll have a wonderful time, I'm sure. It's a tale that could have only taken place in that era of miracles and spirituality. Wondrous and weird. Senseless and stupid. Hopelessly tragic. Will you watch it with me? As soon as the final word leaves her mouth, I'm engulfed in darkness, not even given a moment to brace myself. <clears throat> the tower's stairs crumble beneath me. My feet have nowhere to go. As I'm being battered by the roaring blood river, my consciousness melds with another. Ooh. We're gonna stop it right there. Sheesh. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to entrance. Okay, so. First off, the whole gathering the keys thing was kind of interesting because this is something that I really love about this game. It does a very good job at like keeping the pieces moving and you know keeping the mystery going it's not some cut and dry thing of oh evil witch you know curse everybody and kill them it's not that simple obviously it's it's got like multiple layers of mystery and multiple questions along with it so obviously now our main questions are this how do the flaxen haired boy the beast and jacopo know each other 
How are they connected? Then there's, what did they do to earn the wrath of the witch of Morgana? And obviously, as we're about to find out, how was Morgana created? So clearly, all three of those questions are about to be answered in the next episode. So, that's going to be it for this time. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video and tell me in the comment section below what you'd like to see me play next. If you enjoyed this video or any of the videos or series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when a new one of those videos comes out. Anyways, that's it for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!